Welcome to part three of the LS swap for the uh, No Name Nationals Firebird. T today, um, well, I got a lot of stuff to do today. Somewhere here it is, right here. Uh, big long list of crap. But we're gonna start out uh, putting this harmonic balancer on. We're gonna use this interesting little tool here. Then we'll work on the on the uh, water pump. Who knows what we'll do after that? Something on that list. This is a pretty simple device. It's just a bolt and a bearing, a couple washers. And you just crank it in. So I kind of feel like I'm going to run out of socket before I get it all the way in. That should be it. You just want this flush with the uh, crankshaft. Real simple. Harmonic balancer bolt, this giant 24, is a one-time use uh, only bolt. Uh, plenty of people have successfully used them more than once. It is $12 on Amazon. So I actually have one on order. It should be here tomorrow. I'm going to go ahead and use a new bolt because I have one on order. I'm tempted to reuse the old bolt, but I'm not going to. It has, a, it has some Loctite stuff on there. As you can see, it's kind of scraped off on mine. So I just went ahead and ordered another one. Under the water pump, I guess. So I kind of think if you do an LS swap, you know how to do a water pump. Uh, here are our surfaces. Make sure those are clean. Make sure they're clean on the new water pump. And then bolt it on. I also have a new thermostat housing. And thermostat, uh, reason being, the reason I have this new stuff, uh, if you've followed this uh, project along at all, You'll know the other engine did not come with a water pump on it. This engine did. Uh, so I had, or, had to order a new water pump for that engine. And since I already had a new water pump, no reason to put the old stuff on. I already had this new stuff. So that's what's going on. Although I will be using the old bolts because even though I ordered new bolts, I can't seem to find them. Here's our new pump. It's ready to go. Kind of wish I'd found me uh, new bolts, but well, it'll be all right. You see, I've got the... I love these gaskets. Don't need a gasket maker for them. You just put them on the way they are. Fantastic. Pretty sure there's a torque spec for this. Yep, that seems right. All right, water pump is done. Okay, I don't remember what I said I was gonna do next, but I'm sure I went off script because I ended up tightening up the header bolts over on this side. I was gonna do the driver's side as well. But realize that I'm short two header bolts. I'm just gonna have to order some more because the only other header bolts I've got kicking around are for a small block for big block Chevy. I'm gonna put the spark plugs in at least on this side. Also, I did have to order a uh, dipstick tube. Uh, the one I had, the bracket was broken off and I was gonna use it anyways, but then I noticed there were also holes where that bracket used to be. So I'm not gonna use that. I don't want oil splashing out or whatever. It just doesn't make sense. I can have a new one here tomorrow. All right, valve cover's on. I'm going to go ahead and put the oil in here. I do not want to forget to do this. So uh, spark plugs are in and tight. Header's on and tight on, on the driver's side. Now I put the valve cover on. I'm going to hold off on the driver's side, uh, tightening all that down. I'm using a 5W30. It is synthetic blend, high mileage Valvoline. Some of you may have opinions on that. Uh, for me, it was on sale, so that's why I'm using it. Got a cool spout, though. Kind of interesting. Makes it easy to put on. Check that out. It looks kind of like a uh, bottle of dishwasher detergent or something. I don't know. They may have had this for years, and I, I just noticed it, but I think it's cool. Unfortunately, I've got some other commitments, so it'll probably be a week before I get back to this, but you won't know that thanks to the magic of video editing. So the intake's just sitting on here so I can see what I've got to work with. You know, as I'm going, I'm finding things that aren't quite going to fit right, like the coil packs that are supposed to be bolted to the valve cover on this side. The air conditioning uh, housing over here is going to be in the way. I did put this on. I was thinking about uh, having heat in here, but the uh, heater core on this thing, uh, when I was taking the hoses off, is, is so gross and nasty, I'm, I'm positive that that heater core is going to just leak all over the place. So... Not bothering with the heater core. Maybe I'll have room for the uh, wiper motor. I had to take it off 
getting the engine in. Uh, but looks looks like I probably have room for it. So I had a couple minutes to sneak down here and work on the Firebird. Figured I'd at least get the other the other four spark plugs in. Got the uh, header bolts tightened up already on this side. Oh, the other side's done already. Top secret tool. Can't figure out what they're trying to say on the side here. It's a warning about something. If you don't use an impact wrench, that'd be a good warning. Also seems like that should be obvious. Kind of thought this was going to be the easy side. Nope. All right. Do it the hard way. We use this. Yeah, that probably looks a little funny, huh? But, uh... Need to put this dipstick tube in. Guess what's in the way? AC housing. It's in the way for every damn thing. Yes, this is one of my lights for making videos, but... Works for this, too. Perfect. It's full. Well, you can't tell from looking, but... It's been over a week since I've been down here. I've been doing other things. Back at it tonight, a little bit, working on the power steering pump, trying to get that sorted out. Um, here's our old pump, gotta get it off of here. We got my puller right here, and this is what we need to do. This is the ICT billet uh, power steering pump bracket kit. So that's what we're working on. We got our pulley puller on here, and we're going to use a 5 8 and a 13 16 to get this off. Well, at least that's the plan. Probably should just use Impact, but I'm stubborn. <laughs> what I forgot to do. We'll make sure you lubricate those threads. I feel like at some point it's just gonna come flying off. And there you have it. That's how you get that off. All right, here's our power steering pump. We can take pretty much everything off it. This uh, high pressure line has also got to come off of here. I've got an adapter to go on here so that I can use the stock hose. This is the adapter I'm putting in. This will allow me to use the old power steering hose and not have to do anything funky. <laughs> yeah. So it would be about now that I realized I should be working on the alternator first, then the power steering pump. Well, remember that uh, hole that we uh, drilled and tapped? This is where I find out if it did it right or not. This goes... All the way down here. Really should have had a ratchet ready. Oh, it's got a real good tone. If this were an aluminum block, there'd be another bolt going here, going in there, but it's not an aluminum block. The spacer on the back side. And it's gonna go right like this. I'm going to have to go under the car to hook up the stupid alternator. That's pretty nice. I'll have to incorporate that into some videos. Kidding me. And our little adventure for tonight. Let me see if I can get a light on that. Take a look at the hot terminal on the back of the alternator. It looks like it's up against the frame. Um, Almost positive that there's no way to actually get that nut off of there. What a difference a day can make. The alternator fits now, magically. I mean, I may have hacked the crap out of that bracket back there, but eh, that's all right. Fits now. Moving on to the power steering pump. So step one, uh, we're going to put this plate on, and we need to somehow hold four washers behind it while we do it. Here's our bracket. Let's see here. You, you, you there. All right. Two down. I hope that it holds these two in place while well, I put the power steering pump on. I gotta take these bolts back out. That's tight. So 
Here, I'm gonna put this right like that. But yeah, these two nuts go on the back. Well, I already put one nut on, so back to this. Just had to take a drunk neighbor uh, break. The neighbor stopped by. He's been doing a little drinking tonight. That is always fun. Got a bunch more spacers, a bunch more bolts. All right, take these out now. I think we do the same thing we did originally. I've got the bolts in and the washers on. And we're just going to barely put these on. Put you in place. Here, here is our power steering hose, and uh, it doesn't reach. Our return line uh, is fine, though. It's right there. It'll go right on, no problem. Still need to put the pulley on. Oh, right, I don't remember where I left off. The uh, power steering line. Okay, so power steering line that was on here was not going to fit. It wasn't long enough. And it turns out I did not need that adapter for this car. It's an 87, so I just assumed I would need it. Uh, I actually had that adapter for one of my other cars, the uh, El Camino over there. The power steering hose that had been on uh, this engine, it had come out of a Tahoe. That hose actually works just fine. If you're doing a swap uh, Gen 3, Gen 3 out of like a Tahoe, Silverado, something like that, and putting it into a third gen, at least 80, 87 and up, I would have to imagine, has a uh, metric gearbox. Goes right in and uh, fits nicely for, for my setup. Going to bed, be back tomorrow. New day. Got a little work done already this morning. Let's see, uh, I put the pulley on here. Mocked up this belt. Uh, this belt is not going to fit. This is the one that was on the tahoe or whatever this engine came out of i'm gonna have to check ict billets website see which belt this calls for i didn't even think about it got the intake off because i need to figure out the kick down cable well no, sorry not the kick down cable the tv cable for the 700 uh, r4 transmission it has to have that here is the old uh, throttle body this is where it connected to so you can see when you give it gas it pulls the cable throttle cable pulls this and this pulls the tv cable when we look at this one this is on the opposite side this would not work it, it goes the wrong direction when you uh open up the throttle this is going this way we need something going this direction what i'm going to do cut this piece off of here and weld it to there. Uh, the important thing to get is a measurement from here to the center line, to the center line of this. So then we will come over here, grab the center line, and we're gonna come down to where at about 3.7, and that'll be the center line. So I am going to cut that bracket off and then just weld it on right here. Make sure the center of the piece that hooks to our uh, TV cable is at about 3.7 from the center of this. And I know that probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense. That probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense to you, but once I'm done, I'll show you the measurements and you'll, you'll see how it works. Just to give you a better idea of what I'm doing, I'm cutting that piece out. And then we will weld that on to the other throttle body. Uh, a Dremel would probably be the right tool for this. That's not what I'm using, but that would probably be the right tool. So do it. So here's a little piece I cut off and checking our measurements to the center to the center of that. I uh, got about 3.8, 3.7. So I'm going to call that close enough. As you all know, I am a terrible welder. So wish me luck. I told you I was a shitty welder. So it's on, but let me see if I can get a little bit, a little bit better weld on it. I believe that's what's called a booger weld. Still a little hot, but using our vice grips here, we can see that everything is still functioning, still works. We are now good to go to put this intake 
onto the engine permanently. Have some new gaskets for this. A little. Probably should just go ahead and replace that since I've got them. I think some brake cleaning or carb cleaner is going to be needed. <laughs> That's kind of gross. About to put the intake on and uh, remembered that these had just been, uh, the fuel lines had just been cut off of here. You need special tools to take these off if you don't have them. Here's kind of what they look like. Uh, I'll have a link in the description to these. I'm pretty sure I just got them from Amazon. I already took the uh, 3 8 off. This is the 5 16 line, the return line. And basically what you do is you just pop this over here. Slide it in. Of course, it's difficult to do one hand. Let me see if I can put the camera someplace. Push your line all the way forward. Make sure it's all the way forward. Then push this in and then pull, pull it off. Super easy, super simple. If you mess with fuel injection a lot, you'll want these. Or if you're like me and you just like tools, then you want this. Okay, intake's on. Uh, there is a sequence to putting the bolts on and a, uh, of course, torque specs in inch pounds. So make sure you've got all that when you're putting your intake on, if you're going to be putting an intake on. But anyways, it, it, that's on. So next, I will start hooking up some wires. I did find a problem <laughs> the other day. I may not have... Ain't not have said anything about it yet. This is not really gonna fit. A bracket that'll fix that problem is uh, $200. So we're not going with that. I have I had another idea and it's on its way in the mail. We'll see whether or not that is gonna work out. Well, timing's everything. I just recorded the, the part about these coils being too big. They stick up too much and hit the air conditioning over here. That's right, I ordered a whole different set of coil packs. I got uh, both both sets, the ones for the uh, driver side and passenger side, for 60 bucks from eBay. And the difference with these, the, the main difference with these, you now these are they're LS coil packs, they're interchangeable. Uh, this bracket is the same, sort of, it's close to being the same. But these coils are a little bit different. You see here the spark plug, where the spark plug goes, is up high and this is what rams right into the air conditioning box this one on on this the coil is much lower and it's offset uh over to the uh to the right here Let's see if i kind of line them up yeah there we go so you see how tall this is right here and this is low and and over to the right more so this does actually fit do we now have room to put a spark plug wire on here that's, that's what I needed. Already got our plug wires on, coils are on, and I've hooked up uh, the coil packs here, and I went ahead and connected the injectors. Uh, this harness is set up for a different type of injector than these injector connector, but it came with all of these adapters. Next up, I gotta work on this mess right over here. This is where our ECM's going. Right down in here. And gotta get this taken care of. Get uh, get this wired up. Get the uh, hot lines that go over to the alternator run. Yeah, this is where I need to focus my time next, is right here. Gotta order some parts tonight. Uh, a throttle issue over here, the throttle cable issue over here. And our belt. Time keeps on ticking into the future, and it is ticking quickly. I do not even remember where I left off with the camera. Quick update, hopefully I'm not covering old ground. I did get a serpentine belt in, and it does fit. You have the ICT billet uh, low alternator truck uh, engine um, bracket setup. This is the, the 790K6 is what you want. We did the <laughs> booger welding here. I don't know if, I don't think I covered this on the camera. I cut off the old, uh, I basically cut up the old bracket from the TPI engine that is no longer needed and then welded it to this bracket. Uh, yeah, I did kind of cover up the, <laughs> the cruise control uh, portion, but I don't plan on using cruise control on here, so I don't really care. 
Factory uh, throttle, the, the 80, 87 Firebird uh, throttle cable will not reach here. So I did order another throttle cable. You can actually see it sitting right over there, that braided piece of uh, mess. One of the items I need to work on from the inside of the car is getting this getting this out. You can see this is adjustable. The cable's adjustable. I don't really care for this end, but uh, it's what I got. It's what I got. I'll make it work. And that, that is definitely where the computer's going. Made a little metal plate that I mounted uh, this to. This is a GM piece. They're really cheap. You can get them on eBay. You can use this to hold the computer down. This uh, is not the computer that's going in here, but one that's a lot like this. Using this to get all of the measurements right that I just kind of eyeballed and made work. You guys tell me if the uh, throttle linkage is working? Yeah, I guess I should have done a live stream or something. Oh well, I'll find out when I play the video back. It is another day. I've been working on the throttle linkage. I ain't gonna lie, it's getting down to crunch time, and I don't know if I'm gonna make it. I'm running out of time. But, uh, here, you guys will... You guys will like this. Let me see here. All right, so if you guys haven't seen, if you guys haven't seen my videos on the uh, JF uh, JF Ego Igwu, well, here's what it is. Anyways, I got a couple videos on this. You might want to check it out. So here's what I'm doing. I don't have any. Got nothing. No battery. I'm just gonna hook this up. I don't know what the hell that is. Oh, I've got that jump starter on there. I had just wanted to test it and make sure I'd wired everything up right. Well, it looks like I did. I'm trying to bring part three to a close here tonight. I just want to hear this thing kick off one time. Uh, that's it. That's all I need. I've wired up a couple things for the computer that have to be wired up uh, for the ignition switch. Uh, you can see the fuse, little fuse box over there, and there's an orange light. You'll see it in a second, because what I'm going to do is go pour a little bit of gas into it in here. Hopefully, connect our ground. We should see that light go orange. That's the check engine light. Got a check engine light. Hey, it works. Like, subscribe, comment. See you guys in part four. That's pretty nice. I'll have to incorporate that into some videos.